Thanks again for coming back to another World Hiker travel video. If you'd like to hear the full story about how I went from being nearly deported on arrival to invited to being on TV in Hargeisa, Somaliland, click the link. Otherwise, enjoy the upcoming interview with the very friendly hosts of Good Morning East Africa. Good morning, welcome to Good Morning East Africa. My name is Felix Alois Rajoy. I'm joined by my co-host, Abdullah Hassan. That you have the world hiker in our studio. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You're too friendly, man. Oh, well, I'm used to being here in East Africa now for a couple of months. People are very friendly with you, so I try to be friendly back to them. Okay, once again, welcome to Hargeisa. Thank you. I so appreciate it. land. Yes, sir. How do you feel being in this awesome atmosphere? Oh, it's a good place to be, good place to visit, mm -hmm. and I think the news would make you be afraid of going to new places, but I've had only good experiences here in Somaliland, so I look forward to sharing that with mm -hmm. friends, family, and students when I go back home. Most people fear coming to Africa, first of all. Yes. Yeah. The first time you're told, you told yourself, I'm going to Africa. What did you think, by the way? Mm, for me, I try not to take the stereotypes and negative stories you hear on the news and not be ignorant, but go and experience for myself. So I try to push the bad stories behind and go see what it's like. Because often when you get there, you meet kind people, you meet people that help you out. We're more similar than you think. And so I always look forward to going and seeing what it's like first person. And what was that, the first time you decided to go to Africa? First time, I came three years ago and I went to South Africa and Lesotho and Swaziland and Namibia and had a wonderful experience. So that gave me more encouragement mm -hmm. to want to come back and visit East Africa, North Africa, and in the future, West Africa as well. Allow me to take you back a little bit. I just heard you saying that uh, there are some negative stories people getting mm -hmm. out in Africa. What are these stories people? Because, uh, really? I think the news anywhere you go tends to focus on the negative stories because they seem more impressive or they make people scared, they make people afraid. But I, I try to not listen to those stories as much if it's disease or if it's poverty or problems or safety. But you go and you experience it for yourself because often when you go yourself you find things are much better. People have more in common with you than you imagined before you come. And you do go a lot. So how many countries have you been to so far? I've been to 156 different countries. <laughs> 156 well, countries. Let me ask this moment. Okay, friend. How many <laughs> countries are you visiting? Visit it yourself, man. Okay, let me try. It will be a Somalia, mm -hmm. Bangladesh. That was, that's only three. That's all three? Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me because I can't answer you right <laughs> now. <Okay. laughs> <laughs> right. Or exactly did you see the need of coming to Africa most of the time? Oh, I think there's many different cultures here. There's so many different languages. Uh, we look at Africa sometimes as if it was one country, but it's not. I believe there's 54 countries in Africa. Every country has different groups. If you go to Kenya, there's many different languages, many different mother tongues, and it's such a diverse, interesting continent to visit. I believe you could spend years and years coming back to different places in Africa and never be bored. Just to make this guy a little homesick. Come on, don't tell, him <laughs> tell us you about the awesomeness of Kenya. Kenya, I loved, I loved it. I was in Kenya about three weeks ago and was volunteering at a school in Kitangela about 40 miles or so from Nairobi and the students were incredible, the staff was incredible, we ate ugali every day. Oh, it, was, it was a wonderful experience for me. You talked about being in school. Now, that makes me ask, who is this Brandon? Uh, I'm a teacher. I've been teaching for five years in California. I teach secondary school. I teach Spanish. And then before that, I taught abroad. I taught English to foreigners. So I lived in Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, and Bolivia. And people want to learn English everywhere. So you can find a job as an English teacher. My name is Julia. Welcome to Brazil. And I loved it. So I've been teaching for 10 years since I graduated from university. Please teach us one Spanish name that I can tell this guy. A name or a word? What would you like? Oh. Word. Let, let me get a name. A, a word, a word, not a name, a word. A word. Yeah. How about good morning? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Buenos yeah. dias. Sorry? Buenos, Buenos, Buenos dias. 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 Okay. I want to see if you can reply. Hi, brother. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Ah, <laughs> nice Nicely done. Good morning. Good morning. That works. Now, do you know how to say good morning in Somali? <coughs> in Somali? Ooh, how do you say? That would be subah with an accent. Please, slowly. This is not. Subah with an accent. Subah. Subah. With an accent. With an accent. Subah with an accent. Okay. Subah with an accent. And now you are in Africa. Mm -hmm. So maybe if we can ask you, just 
Do you have a specific countries in Africa where you've taught or, or you're teaching English? Mm, I volunteered in Kenya, which I really enjoyed in Kitangela. And whenever I can, I try to visit a school because I feel like schools are just so full of energy and life. If I can go for an hour or a day or a week or two, like in Kenya, I find that you're able to connect with the community, the children are wonderful. And if I could teach English, Spanish, geography, talk to them about culture from the U.S. or from the West, then that's something I'm always happy to share about. So I love stopping in schools whenever I can. So you've been traveling a lot. Yes. Um, you've been to a lot of countries. Yes, sir. So what makes you travel? Ooh, for me, uh, I just find it fascinating. My brother started helping me become curious in travel when I just finished university. Mm -hmm. And it just blew my mind. The perspective, the culture, the language, the food, everything's different. Every day is exciting. Mm -hmm. Some days at home you can get in a routine. And when every day is different and new and you wake up and you just have this adrenaline, mm -hmm. I feel that every day when I'm in another country. And so you want to continue going. And it's like kind of a good drug. There's no routine say. at all. <laughs> no, it's exciting. Every day is it's new exciting. questions. You don't know what's going to happen. And so I love it. Every day on the road is always different unique it's never the same now let's talk about culture here sure what is the most fascinating culture that you've seen that you're like what is this oh there's many the, every country is so unique mm -hmm. um like in maybe if you mention sure like a couple culture shock that's something culture that's shock yeah, yeah, culture shock. okay i was mentioning a couple of countries earlier before um we were on camera but mm -hmm. like vanuatu and papua new guinea are two countries in the pacific mm -hmm. And I went straight from California over and they had these tribal ceremonies where they got dressed up in colorful clothing and they sacrificed animals and they had kind of men, or boys becoming men and it was something unlike anything I had seen before. And it was all day, me, one other friend and then all local people. And it's just so different than life in the States or life in California, it's just night and day difference. So yeah, the culture shock is sometimes amazing when you come from home and go to these other countries. Yeah. What about the food, you know? The food? I like trying everything. For me, I'm, I guess, pretty adventurous, but my mother told me, don't be picky, eat everything, <laughs> be grateful, and that helps me out now that I'm on the road. If it's I think you support this friend of mine. Yeah. This guy eats everything. You have to when you travel. If you're picky picky, life's not <laughs> going to be easy for you. So you have to experiment things, and food is part of the culture and part of kind of the tradition of the country. So I try to eat local food everywhere I go. So do you often travel by yourself? Yes. Only you? All the time. Yeah, I'd say I go with a friend. You're too mean, man. <laughs> <laughs> too mean. I think just travel alone. You meet wonderful people. I wouldn't be here with you today if I was traveling with friends or family because I wouldn't meet local people, I wouldn't be here. I would be only speaking English with my friends and I would never meet local people. I wouldn't be here if I traveled uh, the with The company may limit you when you are exactly. traveling. Yeah. 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 For good, it gives you comfort, which is good. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel like you have a partner or a group, mm -hmm. but you don't meet that many local people because you're in your bubble with your yeah, group sure. of friends or your one friend or two friends. So mm -hmm. travel with, uh, with a group of people is very different than going by yourself. So if you're given a chance to tell guys who are maybe in Canada or in another place in UK mm. that Somaliland is something that is, uh, I don't know what name to use, like it's a place where it's far beyond what you're thinking of. What you literally, some words that, that, that you tell them to affirm that Somaliland is, is a place to be. It's a place to be. Every country is unique. Every region has something to see and it's a part of the world not many tourists come to and that makes me feel special when I come. Because when I walk around the streets, you don't see very many foreigners. I like that. <laughs> it's, it's authentic, it's real. It's not crowded, you're not on a tourist track following people on a tour, like, it's real. It's an authentic place that you can feel what it's like and there's not many visitors here, so I like that. A lot of travelers say that the most interesting thing about a place is its people. Mm -hmm. And that's very different from the tourists that go for another places for the, for the staff and the places to visit. How, the, how does that come about? The people, uh, I think your main memories of a place are maybe the attractions, if it's animals or a museum or a building, but usually your interactions with people is what really sticks in your head. Right? Because you take a picture of a building, okay, it's a building. Yeah. You eat this dish, okay, it's a dish of food. But usually what you remember days or weeks later is your overall impression and that's created by 
your interactions and your communication with the people there. And when they treat you kindly, when they welcome you, when they teach you about their country, that's really what, when you're speaking with someone down there, ah, how do I remember some other than? It's my impression of how I was here with the people. And so that's really what stays with you to me when you're thinking about it down the road. Like, okay, let's not try and get a little bit professional. Huh? Sure. You're a teacher. Yes. What is the core main value of teaching English? Because some people say, come on, we know our language. <laughs> Uh, I think in, in other countries, like, you know, you learned English. A lot of us, English wasn't our first language. For me, it was, thankfully. Um, it gives you access to jobs, to career opportunities. I've taught people who wanted to work in companies where they had to speak English. I've taught people who wanted to travel and speak English. English opens up a lot of doors for you. And I'm right now in East Africa, where they speak English as well. English is the world language. Everywhere I go in the world, there's someone that speaks English. And so it really opens a lot of doors for you. And I've taught thousands of people who, for one of these reasons, or maybe multiple reasons, have wanted to learn English. And for me, it's just a pleasure to be able to help them and see their opportunities grow when they become more confident in English. Wow, man. Language to add to my resume or something, or to be able to converse with other people. Uh, exactly. Now. And your English is very good, by the way, so good job. Well done. Thumbs up, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's compare uh, the schools. Sure. From your place and in Africa. Mm. Well, sure. I was very different. I was very impressed at the school in Kitangela, in Kenya, because they started at 7, 7.30 in the morning, all the students arrived. And then they stayed, the older ones, until about 6 p.m. My students at 3 p.m., sometimes they're sprinting out the door. Like they are so ready to be done with school. And in Kenya, at 5.45, when school is finished, they had questions and they didn't want to leave. And they wanted to ask me more questions. They wanted to stay at school. And they were just so dedicated to their studies. Like it, it was a privilege to be in school. And I feel like the teachers and the parents really had them motivated to be there at school. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And I think in the U.S. we have a lot of good students too, and some people sometimes take it for granted that they have school or education. And I felt like in Kenya they really value the education. So many Americans do too, but I think in Kenya I really felt that in a strong way. Uh, the uniforms are different, like the order in the school is very different, the food that everyone gets fed. 400 students get fed ugali at lunch together. They have their porridge break and they have their tea break. It's very different. Uh, I teach at a school of 2,000 students almost 2,000 students. So it's a big campus. The campus is huge, right? We have football fields, basketball courts, swimming pools, tennis courts. Uh, there's a lot of room where the areas are smaller here. So it's different. It's definitely a different feel. Uh, both systems, I feel like, are educating the students well from what I saw in Kenya. And the schools in the U.S. are often good schools as well, and I teach at a good school in Sacramento, California. So many things in common, but there are some, some definite differences as well. So a lot of people have the bug to travel, like they like traveling, but they don't nurse it, they don't do it. So what advice would you tell them? I think people are afraid. I think that's the number one reason, is the first step. I have many friends at home, I wish I traveled but dot dot dot, right? And often the but is because they're afraid or they're unsure. It's the unknown. There's lots of questions. I think you have to go. Just go once. The first step, just if it's to visit a friend, visit family, go by yourself, go with someone, but just go, travel once. And if you like it, like me, you may continue and want to do it your whole life. And a lot of people get the travel bug, we call it. Like once it's in you, you don't want to stop because it's so interesting. You know, you don't want to stop. It's a habit and you want to plan and save and prepare your holidays so you can go. But I think the main roadblock is people's fear or ignorance. They think, no, no, I'll stay here where I'm safe in my comfort zone where I speak English, where I use my own currency, where I know people, where I know what the stores are. I don't know how it will be when I go to England, Spain, Kenya, Mexico, whatever country it is, and people put up a wall and they say, no, 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 I'm, I'm a little bit afraid. I'll just stay here. So far we are being the positives. Are there any horror stories you are not telling us? Oh, they're, they're hard days. Believe me, it's difficult when you're 
waiting in your buses or vans crammed in with people and local transportation, right? Mm -hmm. And you're waiting like uh, crossing the border a couple weeks ago to Burundi, right? And people are there and they want to <coughs> charge you more money as a tourist or you're a Mzungu and so yeah, they have yeah, Mzungu price mm -hmm. and then local price and you're trying to not be Secret taken version. advantage of, you know. So there's long days. People see your pictures on Facebook or Instagram and think it's all magical and wonderful. Yeah, yeah, wow, look at the pictures, the, the highlights, movies. but they don't see Behind the, the 20 hours of work <laughs> and travel and sweat uh, that went into those two or three hours of being there. So yeah, no, there's many challenges along the way. It's not easy. Definitely no, not easy. <laughs> now more than 100, now to 156 countries. So this is the 156? Six, I believe, yes. 156 countries. Yes, yeah. What is the goal then? What's the goal? My goal is to visit every country in the world. And there's 193 countries that are recognized by United Nations and then four observing countries. So 197 is the total that I'm using. And so my goal is to visit all 197 countries yeah. in the whole world. So I have 41 countries left to visit. And I hope before I go back for the next school year in July mm -hmm. that I can visit another 15, 20 maybe-ish countries, mostly in Africa. And then I can have 20 countries left that I can continue to visit over the next few school years and then hopefully finish visiting every country in the world in the next two or three years would be wonderful. How long has it taken you to travel to all these countries? All these countries. So when I was 21, I graduated from university and then I moved to Mexico. So that was really the first experience abroad, uh, second or third country after Canada and Costa Rica. So it's been... 12 years because I'm 33 now so in the last 12 years I've been living abroad or living in the States and traveling extensively so about 12 years. Wow I think we can discuss this even at the backstage. <laughs> you know what? But, but again the last question yes. I ask you. So people say that I will travel I will go and, and excavate and go geographically when maybe I'm at a retirement age mm -hmm. but you see you're still young like her. Mm -hmm. yeah. See what's this why? Why? What's your advice uh, to them? Sure. Uh, my advice is don't postpone your dreams. If you have things that you really want to do, do them now. The future isn't always certain. If maybe I won't want to travel, maybe things will change, maybe I'll have a family, maybe I'll have different priorities. And if you have things that you're really determined to do, make a priority of them and do them sooner because we're not sure how long we'll be on this earth. Um, we're not exactly sure what the future will bring and many people never get to doing their dreams or accomplishing what they really want to do. And so for me, I try to do things and prioritize them and do them now, inspire other people, my students, people our age to go do them. And I would say not postpone your dreams or things that you really want to do in your life and to go after them today and do them now. You know what? I think we, we better be like your family where we follow you to see what you're doing. <laughs> so please give us your YouTube account, your Facebook account, if you have an Instagram account. We want to see what you're doing. Yeah? Sure, yes. Yeah. So on YouTube, I make videos from a lot of the countries I go to. It's called The World Hiker. The World Hiker is the YouTube channel. On Facebook, it's The World Hiker as well. On Instagram, it's The World Hiker dot asher which is my last name mr asher is what my te my students call me and so you can find me there and i love sharing about travel and it's it's one of my favorite things to talk about brian asher thank you man it's been a pleasure thank yeah. you for having me Please thank you very much thank thank you very very i'm connecting you guys i'm connecting we'll come back <laughs> Thank you, thank you guys. That's how we leave it up here at Good Morning East Africa. Please catch us up again backstage. Brian Asher. Yes, sir. Thank you. See you next time.